Hello, scouting tubers, and welcome back to Let's Play Xenonauts X Division Mod Late Night Dodging the Coronavirus Edition with me, Blue Ankylo. Uh, it's Friday night. We got a bunch of small missions last episode, and we got a bunch more today's episode. So, without further ado, we'll just sort of get right to it. The A team's got one immediately. The B team, er, sorry, the A team will get one in a little bit. The B team gets one immediately, and then maybe a second one in a little while. It's a little bit too far away from the C team to get there in a, in a decent time. So I think what I'm gonna wait on is wait till we rearm a little bit more. Should, hopefully it won't take too long to get, ah, you know, I changed my mind. This should be enough ammo to shoot it down. <laughs> just get it over with. Let's just go with the mission. First things first, let's get started. Crash site, intercept. So it's a normal scout. One thing you can do here, this, this actually is a good tip. If you pay attention to the airstrike value, you can tell, like, you can see before you shoot it down what type of UFO it was, approximately. Small, medium, large. And if you know the speeds, you can figure out exactly what, what uh, type it was. But, you can also sort of figure it out by the, the airstrike value. 25,000 is a scout. 15,000 is a light scout. So, for instance, we still need a light scout Sizen. So, on this mission, if it's Sizen, we want to capture it. But on this mission, there's literally no new aliens to capture. So it doesn't really matter. We could just airstrike it, but, you know. We need the experience. We need the... We get a lot more money for doing it manually. Also, I need the data cores to make more airships. So I can't even just sell them all. Alright, so. Start in a corner with some cover. This is better than the last map. Another farm. Another uh, situation where our our shield guy can't even get out of the starting position without a little bit of help. The cars are so much fun. So all I'll do for now is just kind of hunker down in here with a bit of a vision. You see a farmer over there. I don't want to run into the middle of the map if I can, you know, hold off a little bit. So we'll, we're, we're, still, we're still dealing with the B team. These guys are not spectacularly powerful soldiers. So if possible... Well, I'd rather they took a shot at the shield guy, if anybody. More likely to survive. It's, it's not... Evan, you were just asking if you're alive. Well, for the moment you're alive. Flamethrower... Man, I, I, don't, I don't like... I'm not trying to complain about everything, but, like... I have a really hard time with all the short-range weapons, like the carbines and the flamethrowers. Because there's just nothing they can do right now in this map. Like, there's... They have very little... I wouldn't say value, but very little purpose until we can get close... Close the distance. This is why I'm thinking of building more laser and eventually ballistic rifles. And then maybe using things like flamethrowers and carbines as a backup weapon rather than a primary weapon. Because for primary, our typical encounter range is like one screen width. Kind of your vision range is where we get to get encounters. Uh, it's different in bases and urbans and stuff, but generally there's there's some space. So you need to be able to shoot more than five feet. Anyway, we've got some Sizens. Good old farmer helping us out. So, you know, we don't want to destroy corpses, but other than that, there's not a whole lot of, uh... There's nothing specifically to worry about here. We could capture some. Uh, it's easier to just kill them, though, especially with rookies that aren't, you know, particularly impressive with their accuracy or, or um, time units, that is to say. You can see they can barely run from the ship to the fence in, in one turn. Alright, well, we only saw the one, and he's probably dead now. Hunter Car's saving us a lot of time by scouting out. Let's send, uh... Danny, you can't... This is not cover. This is not cover at all. Alright, what I'll do here is, uh... I'll use a shield guide to provide physical support. I could throw some smoke grenades down. I'm not gonna... That just, just takes too much time. 
But that would be smart. <laughs> we'll keep the sniper in position. We'll keep the rocket in position. Sometimes the smart play just takes too much hassle. Too much time, too much energy. So we just uh, speed things along a little bit. Play it a little bit more on the cuff. It's more exciting if there's some some risk of dying. Besides, spamming grenades everywhere is... Well, I wouldn't say cheap, but... I don't know. It's cheating. The aliens... The aliens' AI cannot really handle tricks like that. And I know I use lots of tricks to, to take advantage of the alien AI anyway, but... <laughs> some tricks are, are... Oh, good. That's a good reminder there. If you heard the screaming in the background, that was the s signal that all the uh, xenomorphs are coming. So, we actually don't really want to move too much closer because they're going to start charging towards us because they're dumb like that. And I don't know which soldiers they will co go after. But it's better if you've got allies nearby to provide some cover fire. So the main team is just going to hold, I think. Or the, the home base team. There's one. Now I went for the tank, which is fine. There's a bigger one. It'd be nice to capture these guys, too, if I could get on it, because we need the chitin for the axes. I guess I forgot to mention that. Of things to capture, xenomorphs are pretty high priority. But in this scenario, they're not going to be very likely to be captured. Alright, get rid of them. The other guy went into this house, I think? Oh, it's an operator. It's the wrong operator, though. We needed a light scout operator. This is a uh, normal scout operator. I'm going to try to keep my distance with the tank. Uh, he could have a lightning weapon, which would deal a lot of damage to the tank really quick, really fast. Cheapster? What, what did I What did I do, Dobry? What, what what makes Blue the cheapster today? I'm sure there's a good reason. Alright, well, unless I use some grenades here, Thornum is never going to make it over that fence, so... Someone else can go scout this direction. There's nothing over here anyway. Flamethrowers will kill them. As will rockets. Alright. I would like to catch the Xenomorph Warrior, so we'll see if he comes close to somebody with a stun baton. That's actually not a bad spot. We might get him. He went for the civilian as bait, which is perfect, actually. I will gladly sacrifice some civilians for two chitin. Oh. <laughs> I don't think it was me being cheap. It was... I was talking about, like, uh... Cheap tactics, I think. Using smoke too much was a cheap tactic. Is that was that what I was? I think that's what I was saying. Dang it! You guys have terrible time units. You have to you have to put this thing asleep. Or you're all gonna die. Really? That's two people with one time unit short of being able to just work together to get one more baton hit in there. Uh, well, we've hit it, what, three times? Four times? One, two, three, four, maybe five? Uh... That's not gonna be a hit. 28, that's probably one more baton whack. Okay, Lone Grim. This thing's gotta be about ready to fall asleep. You can do it. They only take, like, four or five whacks, usually. We had one time unit to spare, but you got him. Alright, good job, team. You, you pulled through at the last possible second before the Xenomorph Warrior ate your faces. So, good good job, team. Okay, we're going to have Squatchamil keep an eye on uh, the side that I'm not keeping an eye on. That's two more chitin for the, for the army. Oh, man. Time units. You can't even get to cover. Also, you found another alien. That's bad. <laughs> bad for you, Squatch Meal. No cover.
Boy, what do we want to do with that guy? Light his house on fire? Yeah, light his house on fire. We need uh, 34 time units to throw a grenade. Technically, we could save a couple more by dropping our stun baton on the ground, but we're not going to micromanage too much. Now, this probably won't hit him. Unless it's the greatest grenade ever to fly. Wait a second, don't I have a rocket launcher? Isn't this literally the job for rockets? <laughs> the problem is, you see this shot? There's a reasonable chance that Granola just shoots the fence under his foot and kills himself. That's really, that's really dumb. Every single tile of fence is like 35% chance. So it shows you hitting this wall is like 95%. But it's actually more like zero because he's going to hit the fence for sure. Oh well. Yeah, get out of here, sink. We'll just deal with the bathroom for now. It was a good grenade, at least. So... I would still like to shoot a rocket, but it's going to be tricky to get this to work. What we can do, we can try... This, this is getting complicated. We have to get rid of some fence... To maybe shoot the good rocket. Surgical. Can I hit this wall? Not quite. I can hit this wall. Find your right pixel. Alright, 95%. Don't kill your friends, Granola. Well, we still didn't hit the alien. <laughs> but the house has sure had it. <laughs> I think we killed another civilian or something. Well, I did the best I could. <laughs> That's all I got. I feel like I gave it an honest effort, at least. So, Squatch Meal, if you die. I mean, I did everything I could. I didn't throw any smoke grenades your way, but... I was just talking about how I don't do that. Okay, there's one more thing we can try. A 44% sniper shot. Even if it hits the Sizen, it's just going to hit his shield. Also, we don't have enough time units for it. Never mind. Maybe next turn. If you... Um, the problem with rocket launchers, if you move them and then shoot, you lose all your accuracy. So, uh... That was why I didn't just move him onto the road and shoot. He would go from... Like, 95% to, like, 30%, just just because he moved. It's one of those... It's like, like Long War did kind of the same thing in, in XCOM 2012. Cannot shoot through... Well... The first shot will be blocked, but the second volley might make it over. Hey! Look at this, Squatch Meal. You might be fine. He's suppressed now by a tank. Good job, Contra Car. Saving the day. God, this civilian's just walking through the fire. This is fine. Alright, this time you can get to real cover. Tractor cover. Or hay-based cover. Grass-based cover is the best kind of cover. <laughs> it actually works surprisingly well, but... <laughs> Just, realistically, this would not stop bullets. Maybe, maybe plasma energy would get stuck in it or something. Maybe, but like kinetic bullets would just fly right through it like nothing. All right. Give this guy a little bit of smoke. Twenty-four percent. Beautiful. It'll be a little bit better if we take one more step. 40 time units, 
47%. We can do a little bit better if we throw it a little bit... Like, a couple tiles in front of them. 59%. I don't think that's worth it. Just go for the 47. Will my insurance cover the house? Well, no. We we don't pay these guys... <laughs> If we destroy their house, it's not its not our fault. It was the aliens that did it. Besides, there's more pressing issues than material damage. All the bodies on the ground. Now, I know there's an operator down here somewhere. Maybe he went back into the UFO, actually. Oh, well, here we go. Good shot. Good job, Hunter Car. Who's a good little car? You are. Hey, Sonic. The alien was a proud owner of the house. Yeah, I feel like they have right of acquisition here because they uh, they landed next to it, so it's theirs. And then we uh, took it back from them. <laughs> the farmers, I don't know. They should have defended their house better. There's an alien in their house. So I think it's the alien's house, yeah. Makes perfect sense. Ah, 72%. Come on, Lone Grim. Close. Suppressed them. Blue starts the housing crisis? There's already a housing crisis. I didn't start it. Uh, we'll go with some chemicals next. If I fire another rocket. Alright. This guy's proving a little bit of a pain to get out of here, but, uh... Oh, he's only got the lightning weapon. All he can do is put us to sleep. He can't even kill anybody. Let's see. Well, we tried to bring him in peacefully with the chemicals. Well, with, with one chemical. Now we're going to try a different chemical. Yeah, that, that'll work. Alright, well, I think that's everything for outside the UFO. Those fences were alien agents. We had to get rid of them. Some people call it collateral damage, but for X Division, it's just part of the job. Alright. Time to just move everybody closer. Also, there's a fire that's going to... Well, we just started the Australian wildfires as well. We, we're really busy today. Oh! There's... He's... What? How is he not dead yet? Oh no, Hunter Car! That's the problem with lightning weapons. Not so much hitting your guys, but hitting your cars. Hunter Car, that's, that was very close. Almost one shot by this guy. Oof. But how did this guy survive? Well, where four grenades doesn't work. The problem is, and this, this I, I think I've been meaning to explain this for a while. The problem with chemical rockets is although they put chemical gas down, which is typically used to kill without destroying equipment, the impact damage of the chemical rocket is so high that the corpse explodes anyway. So, we did not get any rewards for that dead alien. Alright. You've got to you gotta kind of run here, Aaron, because you're, you're going to get burned. Okay, meanwhile... Hunter car kind of needs to get out of there. Hey, kill for the machine gun. Also, potentially suppressing fire. Also, while we're at it, let's give him a little smoke. It's fine. Evan wanted to stand there. He told me that was uh, he, he wanted to take one for the team with this with the grenade there. Besides, they might try to shoot Thornum instead, and they have to shoot through cover there. 
he, he's providing cover for Hunter Carr, the most important member of the team. Uh, that was unfortunate. All right. There was another alien? Oh no, that was a civilian that died there. <laughs> These guys just keep running into the fire and dying. But the, the, the Sizens inside the scout are falling asleep as we speak. All right, let's set up our breach. Man, I got like three of these missions to do. This first one's taking forever. Okay. How many people do you think we're going to need to get through this? <laughs> do we need more rockets? Probably not, but never hurts to be prepared. Oh, these two guys. Flamer and and Carbiner. Squatch Meal and Aaron. Maybe they'll finally get to do something if I uh, run them into the into the UFO here. It's just not a great game for short range weapons most of the time. So we'll put them behind the shield guys so that next turn when the shield guys open the door they'll be in a good position to or maybe in a couple turns they'll be in a decent position to actually use their short-range breaching weapons. All the purple and green gas kind of feels like the, like the Joker. Yeah. What other... We got... We get fire. So we got red-orange flames, purple stun gas, green chemical gas. We could throw black smoke in the mix. We could, we could get like four different gases mixing together at least. Is there any other... Is there any other colors of smoke we can... We can find? Yeah. All right, next turn, we breach. Are you gonna open the door? All right. Chemistry with X Division, exactly. All right, well, there's nobody at the door. We, we smoked them out. With, with smoke hacks. Good, good shooting, Lone Grim. You showed that shrubbery. Unfortunately for Clabear, we should just call him Clabear, like Cobear. Um, again, machine guns aren't the best for for this kind of situation. Okay, well, we're gonna wait for the purple gas to get out of the way so we can move in there, and then we're gonna throw green gas at this door. But we gotta wait a couple turns. I guess this is part of the problem for why for my breaching units, my shotguns and my flamethrowers, is I don't actually do much of a breach. I just toss grenades in instead of actual shooting. My the grenades make the best breaching weapons. So uh That's all I really do. Now someone was saying that flamethrowers are pretty good on doors, actually. I haven't tried that out. Maybe we'll test that theory out here today, live. Next turn. I can't remember who said it, but someone someone left me a comment or something saying um, they had good success melting doors. Good luck, Aaron Goy. Now ah, this door's stronger than your flamethrower. Well, uh, on the plus side, the alien was really dumb. And just walked through the door. And then got lit on fire. We didn't actually hit him with the flamethrower, I don't think. But, you know, sometimes they're just dumb. I don't know. <laughs> Do you think we can capture him in the fire? <laughs> Walk that one off, Sizen. Alright, let's just let the fire clear a little bit. Maybe it did light some fire back there. I don't know. Oh, wait. So, one of the medics... I, I think this is actually a bug. There's usually only one medic. <laughs> I think we stunned him, and then he died in the fire. <laughs> and that made a duplicate. Because there's only one set of weapons. Interesting. But it also sounded like someone may have died on the other side of the door. I, I don't know. 
Flamethrowers are a mystery. Let's burn it more. Two rounds of flamethrowers open the door. That's actually not bad. Perfect. We should be we should be done here. All right, I don't regret bringing the flamethrower. It didn't get a lot of kills, but melting the door was pretty effective. I, I'd say two turns of, of flamethrower is not bad, considering we've tried like an entire tanks worth of ammo of machine guns, and it never actually it never actually opened. But yeah, no injuries, lots of strength for everybody. Some important uh, lightning weapons for our uh, laser laser industry. Alloys and stuff. Yeah, cool, cool. Alright, one mission done. This one we're going to wait till the morning. This one we have to shoot down. Let's queue up some work for base 2. Seeing as we don't need to work on those civilians forever. So, we did capture one guard. And we should maybe have some lasers. We do, but not enough to like make a full core. So we'll send those back to the main base. Uh, I think there were some stun grenades. Yeah, that's always good. Really happy to get more of those. And that was about it. Oh yeah, the uh, the uh, the day decor. That's fine. We'll we'll build it here. I'm kind of trying to save money. Uh, one thing I did learn is that the cost to ship an item between bases is 10% of of its value. So normally it doesn't make much difference to ship stuff around. Things that only cost a couple hundred gold or a couple hundred dollars, no big deal. But the the, the UFO data cores have the highest value of like they're, they're the thing you can sell for money basically. So shipping them around to disassemble them somewhere else is actually pretty expensive. Like it's fine, you can do it, but you know you're, you're spending some money on that. And we have the engineers over here that they can disassemble. So we'll do that instead. And one scout is like one Foxtrot or two Assyriuses, I think. So. Yeah, you need two light weapons. Or no, you need two alien computers. That's the that's the limiting factor for Foxtrots. Okay. Oh yeah, and then don't forget shipping your stuff around. That's that's always important. So we're shipping. We you can actually see here. So I'm going to send a bunch of rifles back to home base. Oh no, that's, this is the wrong direction. We're going to send a bunch of rifles back to home base, not from home base. And every item you add adds a little bit to the shipping cost. And it should be 10% of the item's value. So Cheap things like these, no big deal. But expensive things like UFO parts, maybe not the best idea. It was still only 5,000, but... Anyway. Okay. We'll see if we can shoot this puppy down. Should be easy. Do you want to do one... Let's do one air combat. We haven't done very many of these in a while. This is the first one for the stream, so... If you've never seen X Division air combat, this is, this is always interesting. Alright. We're still only dealing with... Uh, you know, scouts, so they're not that hard to shoot down. We'll probably have to do a, a bit of a missile dodge here, or whatever they call it. Whatever their projectile is on the big arc. The, the trick here is to be perpendicular. And start cutting through kind of a spiral inwards. And we'll be able to outturn them. We just don't want to be tr heading straight towards them, or else we'll get hit by these. Like, that's a scout missile. I'm also a little bit too close. We're getting hit by his, uh, his pulse, pulse laser, whatever it's called. Took a little bit of damage from that, but we should be okay. Also, my angle wasn't quite right. But I, th I think we're inside his arc now, as long as we go quick. Yeah. Just keep turning. The, the real trick here is just to keep turning. Once once we get a little bit closer, we got him. Yeah, this is it. And actually, at this point, you can just target the alien UFO itself. 
they will automatically adjust their speed if you turn off uh, afterburners. And that's the end of that. The one guy I turned afterburners off did the job, but <laughs> clearly not that difficult. Okay, air combat, pretty cool. Let's see the morning and do some more missions. All right, yeah, we're building more Foxtrots, of course. Got to get him some ammo. North Africa. Right, I shipped over the uh, the lightning weapons so that we could disassemble them, hopefully. It's fine. I need all the energy cores. <laughs> Test the door with the back of your hand. These flamethrowers seem like it's pretty dangerous to me. Let's get... Let's build this laser preci the precision sniper first, because I want base C to have it for the next mission. Stun grenades are always good to have lots of. Get the scout disassembled at base 2. Get ready for our mission here pretty quick. We'll be able to make another energy weapon once we disassemble those. Let's send X weapon phase one energy precision rifle to Indochina, which is base number two. Precision laser. So they'll finally have an upgraded laser sniper rifle. First Mark II sniper rifle for them. All right. And this is about the right time to send this base, this mission off. So this is A-Team. A-Team against a Light Scout should be very simple. Nothing to worry about here. We've already preset the grenades for the most part before the mission started, before the episode started. So I'm just going to trust that past Ankylo did his job. And then we're going to send one over here as well in, say, right about now. B team's getting a lot of love lately. I guess B team can get re-equipped because we just did a mission with them. They're 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 keep they keep getting stronger. They keep getting the ability to carry more grenades, the most important ability. Even if it's just one more gr grenade. Also, you know, as we get there, we can upgrade to actually having a med kit. Even though we're not like, I, I know I've talked about it a lot, but we definitely need to get away from primary flamethrowers and primary shotguns, but. Maybe what I'll do is I'll try to build some more Mark II rifles or something. I don't know. I really was hoping I could wait and get... Uh... I've got all this ammo for a gun I never fire. Yeah. <sighs> Tricky position there. Rocketeer. Oh, yeah. And then, of course, good to remember to reload the good rocket. I could have built some more stun rockets because I had some stun gas, but I used them on grenades. Oh, well. Grenades are a little bit more multi-purpose than the rockets. Rockets are great long range, but kind of a one-trick pony. Can't toss them over hedges either. Alright, you know what? This is fine. I'm going to launch it, but I have to keep an eye on it. I don't want to do a night mission, so keep an eye on it. So this is a light scout. If this is Sizens, we do want the operator. Kind of the only operator we want right now. Another another farm mission. Do you still get to do autopsies and interrogations? Yes. Uh, we've done most of them already for the aliens we've captured. That's what I'm saying. We're looking for a light scout operator. That's so we can capture him to do an interrogation. And autopsies are done automatically by the mod as soon as you kill an alien for the first time of its species. Oh look, it's Sizen. It's great. So we're looking for a red shirt Sizen. I'll pull it up just for fun because I am on the lookout for it. Uh, one second here. Sizen operator. One of these puppies. We'll shrink them down a little bit. Leave them in the corner. First person to catch him gets all the ankylo points. Okay. <laughs> it's very important. All right, so blue size, and let's see. This is my A team, so we should be a little bit easier moving around doing stuff with these guys. 
If I use a chemical grenade here to light the, the ground on fire, do I care? Probably not. Goodbye, farm. Yeah, chemical gas on wheat field lights the ground on fire. For reasons. But it killed him one way or the other. Oh, I put the tank behind the people. This is terrible. Who, who designed this loadout? Alright, Encarta. And then Kai. Eventually we'll let the tank out. Uh-oh. Uh, we could shoot once. And we can't throw a grenade. That's dangerous. Alright, Mongrel. Probably gotta salvage this situation here. I have a feeling that civilian is just gonna have to die. But, just remember that the Sizen is one diagonal tile over from the civilian, or he, I might not be able to see him either. Uh, so, from the stone fence, one, two, three, one down. One, two, one, two, three, one down. This is where we want it to land, but it'll kill the civilian who's right there. So, if I can angle it... Like this, now that my ally is out of the way, it should hit the alien and not the civilian. Unless the civilian runs right into it, in which case, well, I tried. And then we can use the big tank to get in the way so these guys are a little bit safer. In case, I mean, he's going to die anyway. It should be fine. All right. Snipers. Yeah, we'll put snipers in the uh, the doorways again. We got two kills on turn one. That's a good start. We even saved a civilian's life. I rarely even care about them. Usually I just throw the grenade on the civilians. I was feeling very generous. Alright, so this farm's gonna burn. So if we want to scout it out, we kind of gotta go now. But it's a small map, so easy to scout. Okay, we'll stand in the, the burning farm for one more turn and then we can move up. We'll send Scout Tank. Then we shall send Shotgun. Without a civilian with a gun? Yeah, civilians, they're considered local forces. Some of them will have weapons. As we eventually get further on in the tech tree, they will also get our technology later. So after we've researched, we've, re we've already researched lasers. I think it takes three or four or some number of months. Eventually they will get the upgrades to our weapons as well. Which is pretty cool. Alright, this place is looking fairly safe. Got a good line of defense. Let's move more people up. Could be aliens over here. There's probably, the, the UFOs for sure over there. Want one more backup on this side. We'll send the sniper that way as well. We'll send the other sniper probably to this fence eventually. And the rockets, well... Need kind of wide open firing position. Somewhere over here will probably be the most likely. Cletus the farmer with his laser gauss rifle. Yeah, one day. Uh, where was that? Over there shooting? I, t I took a I turned away from the screen for a second. That farmer still died. I did all this work to keep them alive. There's probably, uh, xenomorphs coming. Okay, well. Do sneaky tank. Hide them behind the wall. I don't want to get too close to this wall just this turn. We'll save that for next turn. We've got a couple more turns before the fire gets here. So what I'll do is uh, I'll keep a couple people on the doorway. Well, you know what I mean. The entrance. Hey, Aaron Goy. You're, you're here. You're... Are you on this mission? 
One of these, I think you're on the last mission. You just missed it. I'm going to say there's a high odds of some ankle biters coming out next turn. Some ankylo biters. Okay, so I have some reaction fire. Although I'd almost prefer to capture them if we get a good, uh, a good chance. But still, better to shoot them and then ask questions later. Also, hello, King Sarius. I see you there in chat. Oh, look, ankle leo bank. Ink. Ankle Leo Biters. Farmers are doing a good job suppressing them. Did you kill it? No. You shot it. You didn't kill it. Alright. Kai. That's a... Uh... Scary sounding uh, weapon coming at you. Excellent! You got one! We're bringing that one home. Hello, Evan, as well. It's been going fine! Nobody's even died today. Yet. It'll change shortly. So there's something firing from behind that wall. Oh, come on. Not enough time units. How about... Mongrel takes a blind, uh, a blind grenade. 45 time units. I don't know if the, the wall might stop him on that side. So let's try from over here. Or like the, the barn might stop his throw. This is not a very good shot. I don't even know where it is. We'll just throw it. Great throw. Good job, Mongrel. That'll, that'll save everyone's lives. <laughs> Classic. Alright, forget about that. Tank! Time for the- oh yeah. Oh, we just about crushed a farmer there. Alright, well this corner seems relatively safe. We'll put, uh... Long range units kind of down in the corner, away from whatever that was. I guess I could smoke. There's, is there anyone that has any time units left nearby? No. Let's see if we can get Visual at least. I could have tried that first, but clearly whatever's there is like right in that little hole. Well, time to move closer anyway. Does the tank have 50 cal guns? I think it's a 30... It, well, I don't know what they call it exactly. Um, it it starts with a 30 cal normal weapon, but now it's a division upgraded machine gun. I don't know what kind of rounds it uses. Oh, that's not good. Well, Kai, uh, I mean, you stunned a Xenomorph. That was good. And then you're halfway to dead. Luckily, you've got some band-aids. There's one band-aid. And then another band-aid. There you go. You're no longer bleeding to death. The band-aids did their job. <laughs> Kai just caught the, the Xenovirus. Alright, let's uh let's put him let's put him in a little bit better cover. Maybe maybe get him healed up to full before we Well you can't fully heal, but heal up his wounds as best we can. Something in there is causing some trouble. So we're gonna try this again with more time units. And I'm gonna say it's probably hugging the corner, so if we if we can cover smoke. Yeah, that'll do. Now, if I just killed the operator that I want to capture, I'm going to be very sad. You can see the operator in the bottom left. Probably covering up chat messages. I should have scouted him out first. Well, now I can't even see what it is. There's somebody there. I think it might be a blue shirt. It's kind of hard to tell in all the smoke. He had a heavy weapon, so he probably wasn't the operator, to be honest. Operators are non-combatants. They don't usually have uh, the best weapons. The 
Dora Band-Aids. Hey, at least it wasn't defective. I was halfway expecting the second one to have no healing on it for some reason. Alright, snipers certainly can move up. Machine guns can certainly move up. Tank! Well. We'll uh, have an oh yeah moment for the UFO here in a second. I want... Gotta remember, don't kill everything. You gotta capture things. Also, everyone say hello to helicopter. Thanks, helicopter. Always interrupting my live streams. Actually, it left pretty quick that time. I can't complain too much. That does not look like a red shirt to me. In card, I can go check. Just to know. It actually had a green shirt. It was a weapon sergeant. We already had one, but uh, those were those are good to catch. Alright. We'll just leave Kai out of it, to be honest. Well, yeah, it's fine. Oh yeah, and then Mongrel blocked himself in here. Are you, are you gonna... Oh, I guess it's safe. I thought there was gas all through there, but okay. I thought he was about to kill himself, but no, no. Okay. Moving on up. These light missions, these light scout missions really shouldn't take all that long. Okay. We're gonna toss a grenade in there, try to knock some aliens unconscious. We'll send shield guy... Jural to the other side. Prepare for some breach. Sniper is probably not needed here. Machine gun, maybe. That was another uh, farmer dying, if you were listening to the sound effects. Alright, Pixel. Can you throw it over the fence? Sure, it says 131%, but can we trust the percentages? No. 100% my butt. <sighs> Wasting my good grenades again. Alright, well, I know what I'm going to do next turn. Fire Pixel and make him pay for that grenade you just wasted. You really are supposed to be able to throw grenades over fences, but... I guess it just doesn't always work for some reason. 113%. There we go. That was a good hit. The game is just on to my hacks. Like, they know I'm cheating. By, uh... By throwing grenades into the UFO. So there is a little thing you could do to, to, to sort of farm up some time units. I, I really don't do it much. But if you ever see, like, professionals doing this... Like, I don't know if there are professional Xenonaut players. But... You gain time units by using time units. The fastest way to use time units is to tap crouch over and over again. It's every 250 time units you spend, you gain one time unit at the end of the battle. So you could just send everyone to do this for a few turns and you would always get max time units per map. But like, this is, this is cheating. <laughs> this is totally cheating. We're not going to do this. Unless like the, the B and C team, they might need a little help. Like, right now, we're just waiting for people in the UFO to fall asleep. So usually I would just end turn really quickly, and there'd be nothing else to do. Instead, we could spend 10 seconds, do a little push-ups, do a little bit of squats, basically. Everyone's doing some squats on the road. Awesome guy, I'm pretty sure you're alive. It's gonna become the channel meme, as everyone shows up to live chat just to ask if they're alive. And then I spend half the stream finding out if you are alive. I mean, I understand, you wanna know, but... We need a, we need a, we need like a chat we need the chat bot to be able to answer that question. All right, enough enough uh, enough squats. There was no operator in there. What a ripoff! Unless he's no, there's no more hiding spots. That sucks. All right, Blood Angel, shoot him. Well, you didn't hit him, but you did shoot him at him. Too far away. Okay, we'll uh, we'll shoot him again next turn. Great. 
Great shooting, Pixel. Pixel's on a roll, two for two. Timmed over. Am I dead? With that attitude, you might be. Alright, suppression's good. Alright, we don't get to use these shotguns very often. Incarta. There you go. That's a dead sizing. Hope you guys enjoyed the, uh, the bird. Oh, we did catch it! Sweet! I didn't even see it, but we actually did catch the one I was looking for. All operators we can catch, catched. Caught. Am I panicked? Are we there yet? Anyway, you can see we kind of had better time unit gains a little bit. You probably need to take more turns. Like, if you have 50 time units, you have to spend 5 turns doing squats to get one new time unit. So, if you want the maximum, whatever the maximum is, I think it's 4 or 5 per map or something is the max. You'd probably have to spend, like, 20 turns just doing squats. There's nothing stopping you from farming like that if you really want. But, don't do that. Alright! We got somebody to interrogate. Excellent. That makes me happy. Alright. We probably won't have time to finish that until we land here. Uh, we disassembled all the stuff. Oh, that's right. New base. Who did that? That was A-Team. Yeah. So that means we've got another light scout to disassemble. There was probably some grenades in there. I... It's always a question whether or not I should make stun rockets or not. But I will make one more, or two more stun rockets. What base your guy is at? I don't move people between bases very much. When, once you've seen it once, you should just, you can just remember where he is. <laughs> I, I get it that the comments are <laughs> surely in jest, right? Alright, more energy cores, not much. Light Scouts don't give us a whole lot of rewards. Oh yeah, we caught another uh, Xenomorph. We got a little drone there. Did anyone else catch any of those? Yeah, we did have a warrior. I forgot about him. That's three more chitin. We might even have enough for an axe now. I always forget to check the Xenomorph page. You don't want to keep these hanging around your base alive. That would be ridiculous. Alright. I could have had 80 researchers for this interrogation. I didn't even think it would be possible. Oh, by the way, I should remove him now that we've caught him. He's been captured. Some I didn't even see him. You actually don't remember. Well, <laughs> like I said, I can't just check everything. I think, though, for the future tubers, we only got two missions in today. It's already 53 minutes of episode, so if I go any longer, this mission will probably take us over the, the timer by a fair amount. So for the future tubers, we're going to end it here. And next time, we'll do one more short mission, and then we'll get into November, finally. I thought we'd be in November, you know, last episode, but it didn't happen. Save, uh, we're probably around 23 or so, who knows. You know, future tubers, you know. Anyway, that's all for today. We're getting some good missions out of this. We actually, we just had two missions in a row where we captured a new alien. But, we're kind of running out now. Now we need terror missions, we need androns, we need corvettes. And then we can capture some new stuff and get some more tech. So we can look forward to that hopefully in the next month, probably. To be honest, November is probably when that happens anyway. So good timing to catch all the easy stuff. Thanks for watching. I will see you guys next episode.